Podcast episode 312 for Wednesday, March 13th, 2019. This is Brian. This is Lisa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Ohio. Ohio. Um, All right. Hit me with this bad joke. Why? I don't know why. I why? thought you should tell me there was no joke. Joke's on you, and that would have been funny. But All right. Go ahead. Why did the cookie oh, God. go to the doctor? he was feeling a little crummy. <laughs> See, that's one you can tell your kids. All right, Justin's not even laughing, so I don't know. <laughs> that's bad. Normally he laughs. I don't know. Anyway. We pay him to laugh. Here we are. We're All back right. Home. You know, I, I've, I had an amazing time in Japan. I'm just going to start with that. I've come to the realization that I may not be quite up for the time travel thing. It's a little rough. Jet lag is tough. It's a little rough this week. Yeah. Um, In fact, we're going home after this. (laughs) (laughs) Right here. Um, Japan, oh my God. Uh, It's really an amazing country. Well, we saw one city. Well, yes, but we saw a couple cities. <laughs> we did, we, we did. Were, we weren't just in um, Tokyo. It was absolutely breathtaking. And, um, you know, I think what surprises me the most is it wasn't that much of a culture shock as I thought it would be. Um, incredibly clean and quiet. That's my, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think, my biggest takeaway Clean, quiet, and efficient. Yes. Um, all the taxis are hybrids, and the cars don't honk. So the streets, I mean, this is a major, major city. It's so quiet. Um, everybody's so polite. Um, restaurants and coffee shops are quiet. There's not a ton of loud noises and right. talking. Um, we, we heard a, a car honk one of those days that we were out and about, and it was kind of like shocking that... It, it, was like, it doesn't seem to happen. Yeah, yeah. it was really, um, really cool. And I was impressed that we were alone, just you and me, in Tokyo, navigating. Yeah. For the better part of two days by ourselves. On our own, unchaperoned, unassisted, and we were doing well. We were finding where we wanted to go. Um, I think the biggest problem was sometimes the phone GPS didn't like all the big buildings, yeah, I, but we get that in Chicago right, too. Right, right. Everything is built up, so it yeah. goes. You know, everything is. Every building is eight, nine, ten, twelve stories. Um, so uh, it does does mess with the GPS a little bit. Uh, there's a fair amount of people who do speak at least some English. So even if you're you're trying to speak some Japanese, the, the very very little bit that we actually know, um, most people were very very helpful. If you um, point, they help. If you point, yeah. You know. <laughs> I want this coffee. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, it was uh, it, it was a wonderful trip. Uh, I think the highlight, uh, one of the highlights, there were a lot of highlights, but uh, one of the highlights for me was uh, was Mount Fuji. Apparently, um, it was a an unusually clear day, so we got to see more of Mount Fuji than uh, perhaps we expected. And then a couple days later, we were getting on a bus to go somewhere. And you could see Mount Fuji yeah. also from quite a distance. From the hotel, actually. Yeah. From the, the hotel was on the 25th floor, uh, was the lobby. And you could look out, and then they had windows all at the back of the, the, the reception area. And you could see Tokyo Tower and Mount Fuji in the background, clear as day. It was really, really quite something. And apparently that's not all that common. Yeah. So that was really yeah. cool. Um, we saw some shrines. We... Uh, had some crazy food. Brian ate some squid. Well, you know, when in Rome, as they say. Um, but uh, no, the food. The food was was interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I must confess, getting back, it was nice to get back to food that we normally eat. But uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of seafood, a lot of 
sushi. There's a lot of sake. There's a lot of sake, lot of sake. Uh, going on. Um, that was rough. Uh, those boys know how to. They know how to put on a party. That's Hot for sure. So. Damn, they can party like a frat house. It was nuts. The uh, the big platinum event was quite an honor to be there. It was yeah. hugely impressive. The food spread. The alcohol. Oh my God. And then there was an after party. Yeah. It was like being back in college when I was in my twenties. It was. It was yeah, rough they had, the next they, day. They had uh, a big barrel of sake and then they broke it open. That was cool. Um, that was cool to watch. And uh, that that was neat. So I don't know how much of that we polished off, but I think you and I drank most of probably. that. Probably. It was um, a lot. Really, but, really, a really good spread. Uh, the president, Mr. Nakata, and uh, the vice president were mingling quite regularly uh, at the event, so they weren't like they weren't absent as sometimes you see, or just at a table or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They were mingling and talking to every single person, which was really um, more casual or or more intimate than I I thought perhaps yeah. it might be. Yeah. And they they both spoke excellent English. Um, um, so the the whole trip was just amazing. Um, we did buy a few things. We did get a few things. We uh, in Tokyo and we were in the Ginza area most of the trip. Uh, like every other store has pens. It was crazy. Even in the drugstore. In, the, in, the, in the, the 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 Lawson's, which is kind of like a Seven Eleven, but you can't really get drugs there. Um, they, had, they had a little display of uh, platinum plaisirs. <laughs> <laughs> just in the middle of nowhere, it was crazy. Um, you know. And there, were, there were a number of small stationary stores that you'd walk in, and then you would see hundredth uh, anniversary emperor. It was crazy. Um, uh, we went to Atoya, of course. Yes. Uh, both G Atoya and K Atoya, which is actually across the street. Most people don't talk about that one. Right. Um, but, they were uh, both just. It was amazing to see how much stuff you can cram into a relatively small footprint for the building. But again, everything goes up. Yeah, I, would, I guess I, would, I, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I knew it was, it's multi floors. It's, what is it, 12, 12 floors or something like that. Um, I didn't realize that the actual size of each floor was fairly small. Yes. It was a lot smaller than I expected. Now, they, they, they pack a punch, they put in a lot, a lot of pens on display. Yes. Uh, for certain. It's well worth the trip. Yes. Um, they even had, they had a lot of, what are now discontinued pens that I just I couldn't believe they had. Um, Sailor King of Pen Mosaics, for example, we saw those at a Somebody number. Somebody was drooling. A number of places, uh, actually, very reasonably priced. Um, uh, two, two places we saw that that pen uh, in multiple colors. Um, just a lot of a lot of really great great pens, uh, Japanese domestic models. Um, for the for the manufacturers, I mean, they, there was that pilot uh, Stella mm -hmm. in Rosewood. That was that was yeah. I would go back and get that. Yeah, I wish I wish you'd have got it because uh, it was. Well, it's too small for you. Well, so. I know, but it's, it was just cool. I like that material. Yep. So, but it was the same material that they made the Vanishing Point in um, a couple of years the ago. The cherry bamboo. Mm -hmm. They had a cherry bamboo, and then they had a black bamboo, and they right. had both of them uh, on a Vanishing Point. But then they had at at when we went to Marazon. Uh, they had them in a Stella, which was really super cool. Like the Stargazer. Yeah, the Stargazer. Um, um, those were cool. Now, we did each come home with a few things. We did. Um, I got this adorable long short with tulips. Check that out. It's so cute. Sailor. Sailor. Yep. Little um, pink section. I'm not normally a pink kind of girl, but the tulips were just the talking are, to me. Yeah. Um, so... Cool nib. What does that have? 18 karat or 21 karat nib on it? I, I don't know. Let me look. You tell me. Oh, it's steel, actually. Oh, all right. Well, got it for a song. The price it's is adorable. It's clean, pretty clean. And Brian took me on this surprise trip on Thursday. This was this was a really, really hard place to find. Um, down an alley, through an alley, between buildings, to another alley. Like and Shoulder width. Yeah. And the, the the interior of this place was no bigger than like six feet long by three feet wide. It was like a table. It was, yeah. It was I, tiny. It's a good thing we knew each other. But I ended up with two, and there'll be a picture of it, Urushi 
pencils. Seriously, check this out. So she asked me to find Arushi pencils in Japan, and I I didn't I expect it、one. to be yeah I didn't expect it to be quite as difficult as it was. You、uh, like a challenge, but I was able to find it, so、um, that was that was awesome. A friend、uh, had given me one years ago, and I'd never seen a I'd never seen one before. I'd never heard of anything like that, so I didn't sharpen it because it's an Arushi it's pencil. Arushi, yeah.、Um, and then we managed to find two. So the one that I have is green, and then we purchased one green and one red, and so now I can sharpen the green just because it'll be cool to use.、Um, It's funny you're gonna But, sharpen a Rushi pencil. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I am. Yeah. Use it. Okay. That's what I'm gonna I do. Mean, they weren't terribly expensive. I think they're、no, about. No, but were they about sixteen dollars a piece? Yes. Yes.、Um, Which is crazy for a single pencil. It, it is crazy. But, but、uh, it's a Rushi. But it was almost more of an adventure. Adventure to find this place. Oh my god.、Um, it actually. It, what was interesting is it was a place called Gojuan,、uh, and it was called the Ginza Pencil Museum. Although it really wasn't very museum-y, no. Was,、uh, they had a we found it funny. They had a retro fifty-one crossword pencil with a used <laughs> eraser there.、Um, yeah. They had these. They had some other really inexpensive pencils, but it was it wasn't laid out in any particular fashion. It was just no. Kind of there were like a couple of shelves and one little tiny display case with like a handful of assorted. Stuff. Yeah, you you literally could not back up. It was you know, yeah. I, I took a picture of Lisa in、cozy. the shop. It was cozy. I literally had my back to the door. You were at the far end of the store,、yeah. like an arm's length away from me. You, your back was to a bookshelf, and your front was to the display case that had the pencils. And I mean, there was no room. It was. It was tight. I mean, if you think of a show table as being three feet wide by six feet long, that's about yeah, it. Yeah, it's probably yeah. It was this, this table that we have、cozy. in front of us. Yeah, absolutely. So,、um, uh, but you know, there's there's a lot of places like that. We went to an antique store、um, <laughs> that was that wasn't much bigger. Oh yeah, the yeah. Yeah. So, in, in, like, the guy specialized you, in European antiques, which was kind of funny. How do you sell anything? You can't. Everything is just so crammed in there. I kept looking for like another corner, but we went in, and then that was it. And、that、there was, was a little bit of thing here, and then you go to the left, and then there was a little bit more area there, but that was it. There was.、Uh, there it couldn't have been、there. more than ten feet square. Yeah. yeah so、um, we did go to another antique mall that was much larger. Two floors. I like floors, that. I like that. And there was one entire display case. Um, that had one or two shelves of nothing but Casio watches. Electric, yeah. Like digital. Two shelves. It was hilarious. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. Like、um, it's a case of Casio. We almost created an international incident.、Uh, <laughs> it's really a great. It's really a great antique mall because they have they have all these things. That I, I wish I wish we could have we could have brought home. And I think the next time we go, I I I'll probably put them on a list. But they had a lot of scrolls,、mm -hmm. um, a lot of prints, a lot of really neat things. They had some vintage kimonos, and and, and Lisa sees one that actually matched my shirt. It was it was like almost just about exactly the same material as the shirt that Brian was wearing that day. And so I moved the stuff to the side. I thought, and went to pull it out. And it was still tangled on the backside, and I ended up pulling over in slow motion. <laughs> the, the entire whole rack thing starts tipping forward. Now, of course, it's an antique mall. For those of you who've been in antique malls, you know there's stuff everywhere. There's、yeah. China. There's breakable stuff everywhere, and I'm just thinking how expensive this is going to be. Or how fast we can run, but、yeah. I managed. To, I managed to catch it. Yep, I caught it with one hand. Brian caught it with the other, and we got it up、uh, there. We had a good, good chuckle with the、uh, one of the shop owners, but、uh, a whole lot of deep breaths because, oh, but、um, it didn't, didn't we, really. We didn't, buy it. we didn't buy it. No, well, it didn't almost match your shirt though. That was cool.、Yeah. It was very cool.、So. Uh, but yeah, so I, my clumsiness is global. So. There was that. There were a lot of a lot of great. We went to a lot of great little coffee shops. That、mm -hmm. was fun.、Um, while there were Starbucks, the rumor was, and we did, didn't actually verify this, a tall was it a tall? Yeah, it was nine dollars for a tall. But you can get Starbucks anywhere. You can. We can so, get that at home. We get it when we travel. So let's do something different. And、yeah. uh, we found a couple adorable little coffee shops and had a good time.、Um, the hotel we stayed at was amazing, and. Um, every day they would replace the coffee and the tea.、Um, I love the way that all the the hotel toiletry smelled, so I took a couple of those home.、Um, 
we had a good time. It was it was yeah. It was a, it was a great hotel, although their their definition of what constitutes warm for food uh, probably should be reevaluated. I guess they're so used to eating raw food that their eggs were like lukewarm. So yeah. by the time you put them on the get to your your table. Even if you get your coffee and your juice and everything else first and then put the eggs on the plate, by the time you get cold. back to the table to sit down, they were working on cold. But so. it, was a, it was a hell of a spread. It was, um, ooh, you just wore. Oh, I just wore. I know. You um, never do that. That's my job. It was a lovely spread, it including, was, including some. Uh, they had rice. They had miso soup. They had uh, seaweed. They had all sorts of other Japanese-specific types of breakfast. And they had breakfast for Westerners. And they had vegetables every day. You had every vegetables. Day. You were loving it. I have never been to a hotel that's had vegetables, mixed vegetables for part of breakfast. Green beans but, one morning. Uh, well, oh. it was green beans, but then there was like carrots and peas yeah. and, and, yeah. and that, that too. So it was a huge had two, spread. two options for, for every day. Are you going to confess your dirty secret? They made these great cinnamon rolls. So <laughs> Lisa would take one. I would take one. And, and Brian, you would eat I would two. eat both, yeah. So. Um, yeah, every day they were... They had different pastries mm-hmm, that were mm-hmm. yummy. Um, but uh, we had plenty. We had plenty. We had, we went off for sushi on what was it Wednesday night? I think it was Wednesday or Thursday night. We had sushi um, Thursday with Thursday, uh, Sachiko. Yeah. And, uh, and that was that was something else. Um, I I was a trooper. I'm not a big sushi fan, but uh, you sat at a table with uh, it was you and I and Detlef and Cindy, yep. and uh, it really worked out to be a good. Not double date because we were with the rest of the group, but a good table mix because there were some things that they really liked that we weren't going to eat. And so there were some, um, I won't call them more generic, but less adventurous right, things right. that they were giving to Brian. Like, here, you have this and this. It's going to be easier, yeah. safer, or whatever. Well, you know, I, I, I ate it all. I had some weird things. I had octopus one night, but I didn't leave, I didn't leave hungry. I was actually quite no. full by the time, time we left. Uh, that and the like eight bottles of sake we drank. I, it was a lot. It was a lot of sake. And that was before the party. It was before the party. The party though was insane because they had, they had every, when you got into the, this, uh, and it was a hotel, it was a, I don't know what it was, but in, in this room, they had tables for every country. So they had 70, was it 74 different, for lack of a better word, delegates, representatives from retailers. all over the world, world, retailers and distributors. So we had a table for USA, and there's a table for Turkey, and a table for Taiwan, Germany, and, Germany and, and whatever. Uh, but they had people who uh, ladies, ladies who their sole purpose was to tend to your table. And ours was freaking efficient. <laughs> I mean, you put your drink down, and it, it, and turn it would around. either disappear, like you put your drink down to go get more food because the spread was massive. You come back, and one of two things happened. The drink is gone, and you have to start over. And she's there to pour because it's not polite to yes, pour, your own drink. pour your own drink. Or your drink would be refilled. So it was impossible to keep track of what you were drinking. I had 14 quarter glasses, I think. Because I, I remember at one point specifically, I took two sips, and she came back and filled up my glass. Yes. Two sips. And there was beer and wine and some fizzy drink and then sake and then some other drink, and then there was tea, but nobody drank the tea. Yeah, everybody would pour the tea. They're like, oh, what's this? They would smell it. Like, oh, it's tea. And then they, they were put thinking it, down. it was like bourbon or something. <laughs> um, they had sushi there. They had just a, a massive spread of everything, all sorts of things. Everything. I think we only got like one piece of dessert, though. That was a yeah. Little... The dessert kind of came and went. And that, that was, was that. But, yeah. Uh, the party was party, amazing. Party but was, was great. It was. Um, yeah. The the trip. The, the entire day for the Platinum event was um, really amazing. We got to see um, one of the Platinum plants. and The new manufacturing fa- process. That was fascinating. There were, in, in while, you know, we were, we're familiar with what kind of goes on, it was very interesting. The most interesting thing for me was that they hand slit the nibs. It's not yes. an automated process. You don't just put a nib in a slot, hit a button, and it goes... They literally operate a lever to slit the nib so you get it just, just where you want it to go. Yep. And then he inspects every one and then presses a clicker, a counter, yep. when he's done. So he knows how many he's done that day. It was um, 
very efficient as you would expect, but the machines are definitely old. Old. And very old machines. If it works, don't don't mess with it. They got 50, 60, 70 years worth of dirt and grime on yeah. some of these. Um, yeah. But that was interesting. We got some tours of the city. We we had Italian for lunch, which was Italian kind of funny. Italian for lunch, which was different. Um, and then we went to uh, a temple, and they had a big display set up there. And then we lots got of, to lots see... Of vintage, lots of vintage pens, everything from you know 1920s all the way through 60s, 70s. Uh, and some more modern pens, including what was very interesting, a 1965 retractable. I know. Platinum made a retractable. It like looks, a vanishing point. It looked just like a vanishing point, except the whole back end moved and not a, not a knob. Yeah. But, um, that was really cool. Really cool, really cool stuff. And then uh, we saw a play. Yep. Which was very different, very interesting. Um, so it was just, it was amazing. Uh, it rained on Monday, so our walking tour was a little... Um, it was cold. It was cold and, and cold wet, and wet most of the week. Yeah, a um, um, couple of the days were gorgeous. Thursday was nice, and it, uh, it was just it was just amazing. It was yeah. really so. We're gonna go back. Well, we'll definitely go back. You know, um, in a group tour, it can be really good because you can feed off each other right. and share things. Um, but I think that I would go back just um, by ourselves yeah. and um, experiment with. Uh, maybe a bullet train or some some other things that we we just didn't have time yeah, for. Yeah, we we did we did get on the get on the subway to go to go around. <laughs> that was it wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be, but uh, I would do more research before we do it ourselves. We were also kind of we were with the guide and we were moving pretty quickly, so I mean I could figure out the train. I mean right. trains are the same and no matter what language right. you speak, but uh, I I still couldn't grasp my head of which you know you get on the platform which one is it is it this one or is it you know which which one is it but. Right. Um, and the road to it's Mount two, two bucks. Two yeah, bucks. the road to Mount Fuji sings. It makes music. What will they think of next? It that literally, was so it, literally cool. it, it it has ribs in the road. And as you go over it, it makes music. It makes a sound. It makes a song. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a song. Um, we took a gondola ride. Uh, we ate hard boiled eggs that were cooked in sulfur steam, and so the outside is black. I mean, it was actually black. tasty, quite tasty. And the yolk was orange, not yellow. Um, so that was interesting, but it tasted good. Add seven years to your life. Supposedly, seven to ten. And then um, in the gift shop, we saw these really cool um, wooden boxes and, and things like that. And our tour guide knew the man who made them. And so we got this very special trip yeah. um, just across the lake to the, the master's um, workshop. And we got to see him um, very cool. video. Yeah. He does these puzzle boxes that are really hard to open. He had one puzzle box that was 54 steps to open the box. I would give up. Um, I think he had one where we, he had a he had a coin in there, a 500 yen coin or something, said if you can open it up, you can have the coin, but yeah. nobody could do it. But And it was just, you know, some of them were boxes, some of them were really weird. They weren't boxes, they were like, he had one with a... a one was a toilet. One was a toilet. <laughs> you had to do certain things to get the, get the box to open up. Another yeah. one was... Uh, uh, a, a school child waiting for the bus. Yes, yes. Um, one was a dice, and I mean, they're all just sorts of different amazing, things. Amazing, so, amazing. So um, it was a good time. I actually bought a couple pieces for my desk, a little pen tray. And yeah, then we a, didn't a little, give the kids their gifts yet. Yeah, well, not yet, yeah. Um, and a, uh, a little container that actually works good for fitting cartridges. cartridges. Yeah, so. Yep. But neat stuff. Uh, it was a good trip. It was fun. Uh, I'm glad to be back. I am extremely exhausted. The trip back was. Oh, the trip back was pretty brutal. brutal. Um, yeah. I think we I'm, got four hours of sleep in over two days. I'm not meant for time travel. So anyway, well, here we are. That was Japan yep. pretty much. Uh, we got a couple. Oh, I didn't even. I got a couple of pens. I did talk about these. Um, so Lisa got the sailor. Uh, I picked up this really cool platinum long short um, striped, metal striped. It's cool. Uh, white gold, uh, 14 karat nib. But you know, just like your your E ninety five S, it's really a really a cool, in excellent condition, really nice condition. Uh, so I got that, and um, I also picked up a nineteen forties ish Pilot uh, with a steel nib. It's black. So we got a um, Sailor, a Pilot, and a Platinum. We, got, we hit all three. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, you know, we also should probably mention. Um, 
uh, Marzen. We went to Marzen. It happened yes. to be the week that the Pen Fair, the Marzen Pen Fair, was going on, which was was awesome. So we actually went on Tuesday to kind of check out the place, and the Pen Fair started on Wednesday. So then we went back on Thursday. So we went back on Thursday, and we ran into um, Keith. So Keith. a big shout out to Keith. So it was, um, was great to, to meet see us, him. and I was surprised to have anybody know who we were in Japan. <laughs> um, that was kind of fun. Yep. Uh, but they had interesting, interesting pens. They had some. Uh, I got yelled at by a uh, pilot rep for uh, taking a photograph of some prototype decimals um, that are being uh, released over the next next year. Um, Really kind of cool. Do we know if they're Japan only? They're, I'm just going to say they are because okay. you know, there's no way we would get that many. But no. there were there were 20 of them. They were cool. Uh, Gore, decimos. Yes. And, and we, I, I guess there's nothing saying we can't talk about them because they were there at the pen fair. Um, they were like a brushed steel in all sorts of different amazing bright vivid colors. Sort of like Retro 51 classic lacquer colors in a brushed... Metallic finish yep. on a decimo. Yep. Really, really cool. Yeah. Very so if you cool. like, if you have the the prelude, uh, you know, the, the Schaefer prelude in in the brushed rose gold, that's what they look like on a decimal. They really were... pretty, pretty sweet. But I took a picture of one and I got ooh, I got yelled at. I was you not did. supposed to take pictures uh, apparently of that. Bad boy. So. All right. But anyway, um, I think that's the I wanted to mention Mars and but a really crazy, crazy bookstore. Huge. Yeah. And uh, a floor and a half devoted just to pens. So it was cool. <clears throat> neat, neat place. Um, what else? New product. New product uh, coming soon, uh, April. Sometime in April. I don't know when yet, uh, but probably within the next two to three weeks. Uh, Sailor, the successor to the Starburst Galaxy and the Purple, Purple Cosmos. Cosmos, the Red Supernova. Ooh. Um, it's, Pro Gear Slim. Yes, only the slim only size. Only the slim size, 14 karat nib. And this will be the only shipment this year. So let's let's get this straight because last year the Purple Cosmos, some dealers were saying the Purple Cosmos was a limited edition. The Red Supernova is a special edition with limited production. So what does that mean? That means yeah, what does that mean? That means that uh, they are only producing 800 pens this year. Yes. To the world, actually, they're not being sold in Japan, um, but their 800 pens to the world are being made this year. They may or may not make produce more next year. More in 2020, there's no guarantee. It may be 800, maybe it. They are not numbered, but they come in all seven nib sizes: uh, rhodium trim, red. It's got that little sparkly, Sparkle. sparkly finish it's to gorgeous. it. It's gorgeous. Looks great. Um, so we have we have received an allocation. We're taking pre-orders on them. Um, and that's they're that's pretty it. much guaranteeing that's we're that's not gonna it. we're not gonna get any more this year. So those are up on the site now. Red Supernova. Grab them because <laughs> there is a finite number for all the retailers in the U.S. this year. So. Done. All right. What else? Uh, we're gonna ch switch gears a little bit. All right. These just came in. I'm super super excited. Uh, it's a completely nerdy thing, but uh, we have new hemostats. So we've been expanding. We've been <laughs> go away. Uh, we've been expanding our repair offerings. Uh, you know, we we added the section players uh, a while ago, and we've been working on new J bars and pressure bars and different sizes that were not previously available. Uh, we've been able to source a really really nice quality hemostat. Um, this thing is amazing. I've been using hemostats. I use them almost daily in repair work. Your this... first one was the one I gave you. Uh, no, I had one before that, but I liked yours because it was it was gold, and what? so I could tell which one the which one the, the hemostat was. Uh, but these uh, regular stainless steel, they're very they're they're substantial. They're solid. They're well built. They're they don't feel chintzy or cheap. Um, I, I don't think these things are ever going to break. Uh, but don't you know? Don't try. Don't try. But I've been using them in place of my regular pair, mm -hmm. and I really like them. Uh, so we now have hemostats and a really good supply of them. Uh, if you do repairs, if you replace J bars, you, you have to have a hemostat. Uh, and these lock, of course, that's what makes them a hemostat. But um, good size, nice quality. Comes in great packaging, even. Yeah, it even comes in a nice little we're, package. We're excited. You know, so. so, all right. Um, that's good. Um, uh, Retro 51, Birds and the Bees just came in. This, this is, cute. is adorable. This is cute. Free prize inside. You get a sticker. 
Oh, there's a sticker. There's a sticker. There? Um, 1,164 were made. The 64 is significant for the song, The Birds and the Bees, came out in 1964. Um, oh, yeah, look at that. Just a nice, sticker. happy, springy little pen. Um, typical retro amazingness. Is that a word? It might be. I think it is. Uh, cute little packaging. It's got a little cardinal on it. It's kind of nice. I like yeah. this. This is a nice one. So that's fun. Good. Those are in. Um, uh, they are limited. limited so quantities. when they're gone, they're gone. Grab them now. Well, as usual, we did not receive the, the full allocation that we asked for. So, but what are you going to do? I think Dave was telling me we actually got some really some fairly low serial numbers in our batch. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. In fact, Dave's got one set aside for himself. Uh, we had serial number five. Oh, awesome. Apparently. So. All right. Anyway, birds and bees. Um, let's talk some ink real quick. All right. Um, Hit me. Mont Blanc. Spider metamorphosis. Web gray. Wow. Um, really kind of a creepy looking box. There's a <laughs> yeah. spider on there. Um, I always said it would be cool to do. You know, we do pictures of this. We'll, we'll get find someone who has With a tarantula. tarantula. Uh, we have yet to find somebody who has a tarantula. So. You know but. what would our staff think like? How do you think Justin feels about spiders? Yeah. Here, take a picture well, yeah. with a spider. That'd be all right. Go. Uh, but they come in this nice, beautiful bottle. I love this bottle. We have a giant spider on the wall. Well, yes, but I wanted, I wanted a real fake. one. I wanted a real one. Okay, well, so. I don't, so there you go. Well, we can't find it, so the point is moved, isn't it? Um, it comes in this great, great bottle. I mean, that's just, that looks beautiful sitting on your desk. Uh, you know, it's actually nice, nice gray. It looks a lot like uh, a pencil. Yeah. It looks, it's really shockingly like a pencil. So, um, you know, I don't know how long that's going to be around, but um, we've so got that. So you can that. write with a fountain pen and make it look like a pencil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, and uh, Red Fox, Petit Prince. Yes. Um, really, that's a nice color Pretty too. Pretty color. Um, kind of a rusty color. Yeah, rusty orange. Does it match maybe? my hair? Orange sepia. No. No, no, it's, no. <laughs> but uh, no, Chris did a nice review here. Um, it's it's really a lovely, lovely color. If you like orange, you like dark orange, rusty kind of colors. Um, this is really a really nice, and of course it comes in the same that same nice square bottle. Um, but uh, anyway, a couple inks, gray ink, pen, and we don't have any paper. But nope, this is the paper. There you go. So, uh, anything else? Did we cover all the bases? I'm sure when we... I think we did. We'll think of 74 more things that we should have oh, mentioned about Japan. Sleep. But yeah. yeah. Um, so. All right. So uh, I think that's it then. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, make sure to join us next week uh, for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. Follow the blog for news, ink reviews, and all sorts of other cool stuff. And check us out on social media as Anderson Pens. Don't forget, we have a store in Chicago, inside the Palmer House Hilton on the first floor. Um, open seven days a week. And if you're looking for part-time work, we are hiring in Chicago. So website, chicago.andersonpens.com. Uh, what about the mailing list? Uh, sure, mailing list. Uh, make sure to <laughs> sign up for the mailing list. Uh, you can sign up any, any page of the website uh, at the bottom of the page. Uh, and we send out really cool stuff uh, pretty much every Tuesday. Uh, and sometimes uh, that's where the kind of the exclusive stuff goes. So if you want to be the first to know about new stuff and uh, vintage pens and things like that, uh, sign up for the mailing list. So. Um, while you're watching us on YouTube, like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see you next time. It's a date. Bye.